Welcome to the Curit Roofing Revolution. The Curit GLP roofing system is a wet laid roofing system consisting of a GLP laminate which is finished around the perimeter with preformed GLP edge trims and coated with a roofing top coat. This video will demonstrate how to install a Curit GLP waterproofing system in a cold roof buildup. If you are preparing a warm roof deck, please see our other videos for guidance. Please note the Curit roofing system includes some hazardous and flammable materials. Please read the handling and storage guidance and safety data sheets before using the Curit roofing system. These are available by downloading the Curit app or from your local supplier. Before starting work on the roof, measure the roof and use the Curit app with built-in Ready Reckoner to calculate materials required for the job. The Curit app can be downloaded for iPhones or Android phones. To prepare for installation, replace any damaged joists and install noggins where required. Noggins are recommended to remedy any play in joists and to provide extra reinforcements for wider or loose joists. The maximum span between joists is 600 mm. Consider the insulation and ventilation at this stage, along with whether the fascia and guttering should be replaced, though this should be done before the decking is fitted. It is recommended to chase out a mortar line at this stage if lead flashing is required. Use the fall helper on the Curit app to check the falls of the roof and determine if furrings are required. Preparation is now complete. Stage 1 of the Curit installation Installing the new deck. The decking must be completely dry when the roof is fitted. Lay the boards at 90 degrees to the joists, making sure that the larger tongue and groove gap is always face up. Leave a 25mm expansion gap between the decking and abutting walls. Mark the joist locations with a pencil onto each OSB3 board as it is fitted and stagger the joints. Use the offcut from the first row to start the next run. Ensure that offcuts are greater than 400 mm and they must cover at least two joists. Ensure to wear safety gloves when handling boards. Once two runs of boards are laid onto the deck, ensure that they are square to the joists and fix the first run. The boards should be fixed at 200 mm centers with four nails or screws across the width of the board following the pencil lines made earlier. Galvanized ring shank nails or screws must be used. These must penetrate 40 millimeters into the joist. The decking stage is now complete. Stage two of the installation process, fitting the battens and installing the trims. Supporting battens need to be installed around the perimeter to support the trims. Use one batten for raised edge trims and two battens for drip edge trims. Measure and cut the slate batten and install it with the screws or a nail gun through the fascia, starting at the raised edge side with a single batten. It's advised at this stage to sight in or string line battens and pack out to suit, ensuring a neater, straighter finish to the edge trims. Measure and fix the first batten through the fascia and then offset the second batten 10 mm lower than the first to allow the trim to sit flush on the edge of the roof. A complete range of trims are available depending on the layout of the roof. Trims should always be used to adapt the system for any changes in pitch and around the entire perimeter of the roof, including abutments. For this roof, we will be using A200 trims, B260 raised edge trims, D260 fillet trim, C100 simulated lead flashing, and C7 corners. The D260 trim is installed wherever the deck meets an abutting wall. The C100 flashing will be fixed over the top at the end of the installation process. Measure and cut the trim using an angle grinder fitted with a stone blade to the required length and fix to the deck using clout nails or a staple gun every 150 millimeters. Remember to wear safety goggles, dust mask and gloves when cutting the trim. A second D260 trim is required 
and this will be trimmed to fit against the external wall and trim and secured down to the deck using clout nails. An A200 drip trim is installed where the roof meets a gutter. Curit trim adhesive should be applied before fitting. The trim should run to the edge of the battens and to the edge of any abutting wall. Fix to the deck using clout nails. The B260 trim is installed around the perimeter to guide water off the roof. Measure the trim and mark with a pencil where the A200 trim meets the B260 trim. Cut the flange of the B trim and mitre both drip returns to allow the trims to sit flush to the deck. Cut the trim with an angle grinder and fix apply trim adhesive to the batten. Fix the trim into place using the trim adhesive and clout nails. For any joints, overlap the trims by 50mm and apply two beads of trim adhesive to the underside of the overlapping trim. Stage 2. Installation of the trims is now complete. Ensure the weather is set to be dry before starting this stage. The first part of stage 3 is preparation of the bandage and reinforcement mat. Roll out the matting across the entire roof. Note that the mat has a straight edge and a feathered edge. Cut the mat to size using a Stanley knife and roll out the next row of mat with the feathered edge overlapping the straight edge of the first piece by 50mm. When cutting the edge pieces of mat, Keep the mat away from the face of the edge trim to prevent the finished laminate from overhanging the front of the trim. When all rows of mat have been measured and cut, re-roll each length and keep them in order on the roof for use later. Prepare the bandage for the perimeters where the trims meet the deck. All joints between trims, trims and preformed corners, and trims with mitered corners should have a strip of bandage cut to cover them. Prepare smaller lengths of bandage and place over. Cut 150mm by 100mm strips for corners where the A200 trim meets the B260 trim. Use masking tape to bridge any gaps between trim joints and corners. The bandage preparation is complete and ready for the resin to be applied. The next stage of the process is the mixing stage. Use a cement mortar mixing tray as a bund for decanting and mixing of resin and top coat on the roof. This should be placed on a flat area, ideally off the roof if possible. Seal cans when they are not being used. Do not mix resin on the roof without a mixing tray. Uncatalyzed resin spilt on the roof can generate an odour which can be almost impossible to resolve. Ensure that you wear latex gloves and safety goggles when using resin and always have eyewash available as a precaution. Using the lid opener tool, open the can of resin and mix well for 30 seconds with a slate batten before pouring the resin into a curid mixing bucket. Start with 1 meter square for detail and tissue work. Take particular care when handling the hardener. Always read the handling and storage instructions and safety data sheet before use. Wearing safety goggles and gloves, pour the hardener into the safety dispenser. Roofing resin and top coat requires a hardener to cure. Using the hardener addition chart on the side of the mixing bucket and factoring in the decking temperature and ambient conditions, measure out the required volume of hardener using the safety dispenser and mix thoroughly into the resin using a slate batten for at least 30 seconds. Set aside a dedicated area for wetting out the bandage using a spare piece of OSB board. Take the smaller lengths of bandage that have been set aside for corners and detail. Ensure the bandage is saturated with resin and transparent. The bandage can then be carried to each detail on the roof and laid over the top. Lay the bandage strips over any joins in the trim and in areas where two trims join together. Take the square piece of bandage and lay over the end of the A200 and B260, ensuring the whole void including corner is covered. 
After a minute, the resin will saturate the mat and it can be moulded to shape. Using a brush with a little resin, dab away from the corner, pulling the bandage tight and down to the bottom edge of the drip trim, making sure the bandage is saturated with resin and doesn't contain any trapped air. The bandage strips can now be applied to where the deck and trim meet. Use a 3-inch roller to apply the resin mix with hardener to the deck and trim area. Lay the strips of bandage on the wet deck and coat with resin. It is important to paddle roll the strips of bandage. While the resin is still wet, offer the detailed tissue up to the corner. Use a roller to shape and finish the corner work for a neater corner look. Stage 3 is now complete and all bandage detail has been applied to the roof. Stage 4 of the installation process. Laminating the main body of the roof. Two people are required for laminating the roof, one to apply the resin and the other to consolidate the laminate. Start with a small batch of resin for the first couple of square metres, approximately two metres square following the hardener instructions. Work in one metre square sections starting with the furthest point from the access to the roof. Ensure that the decking area is dry before laying the laminate. A wet surface can lead to delamination. Safety goggles and latex gloves are required when applying the resin and eye wash should be available in case of emergency. Have the pre-cut roll of reinforcement mat ready for the entire one meter wide strip and using a six inch roller, apply three rollers full of resin onto the first metre square area of that section. Take the first piece of reinforcement mat that was measured earlier and roll out over the resin. Apply six rollers full of resin over the reinforcement mat, working one roller's width at a time. Each roller full of resin should be placed into the middle of the mat and applied rolling the resin away from the middle and then back towards the other end to cover the strip. It's important to ensure the matting is completely saturated with resin at this stage. Move on to the next square metre of decking and repeat the process, applying the resin to the deck, covering with reinforcement mat and applying six rollers of resin on top of the reinforcement mat. Check for dry areas and pinholes as you go. Pinholes in the laminate will lead to porosity and water penetration. If in doubt, apply a little more resin. As one person continues to apply the reinforcement mat and resin in one meter square sections, the second person can start to consolidate the laminate using the paddle roller. This is the most important stage of laminating. It ensures the reinforcement mat is saturated with resin and any trapped air is removed. Roll the paddle roller in a slow, controlled motion over the resin-soaked mat. Make at least four to five separate passes over the same metre square area until the mat is transparent. When a laminate is correctly wet out, it should be transparent. There should be no white or opaque areas. The paddle roller may produce a fine mist if used too vigorously. Take particular care in windy conditions as the resin will stick permanently to whatever it lands on. Before wetting out the first square metre of the second row, go back to the paddle rolled first square metre and apply a wash coat of half a roller full of resin. After applying a wash coat to the first square metre, start on the next run. Remember that each subsequent run should overlap the last by 50 millimetres ensuring that the feathered edge is laid over the square edge and repeat the laminate process. Work along the entire roof in rows until the entire roof deck is complete. Remember that if it rains during any stage of laminating, stop and cover the roof with a visqueen sheet. Water and moisture will contaminate and ruin the laminate. Blend the edges with a brush. Don't walk on the roof whilst resin is still wet. The laminating stage is now complete. The final stage of the installation process is stage 5, top coating. Taking care and paying attention at this stage will produce a roof of superb appearance.
To prepare the laminate for the top coating stage, lightly sand the main laminate with a 40 grit sandpaper. You will need to ensure the laminate has cured sufficiently to prevent strands being pulled up while sanding. Remember to wear a dust mask and safety goggles during the sanding process. Carefully sand corners and bandage joints as this will be visible from the ground. Take care not to sand too heavily on the corner itself as it may lead to holes appearing. Trim any strands from corners or trim joints with a Stanley knife. Remove dust and debris and wipe with acetone to remove contaminants. Acetone is highly flammable and should be stored in sealed containers. Always follow the handling and storage guidelines. Remember to wear safety goggles and latex gloves when using acetone. Once the laminate has been cleaned and prepared, the top coat can be applied. Use a cement mortar mixing tray as a bund for decanting and mixing of top coat ideally off the roof if possible. Using the lid opener tool, Open the can of top coat and mix well with a slate batten before pouring the top coat into a curate mixing bucket. Ensure you are wearing safety goggles and gloves, and eye wash is available in case of an emergency. Using the hardener addition chart on the side of the mixing bucket, measure out the required volume of hardener using the safety dispenser and mix into the top coat using a slate batten for a minute. The trims corners and any areas of detail should be top coated before the main body of the roof. Use a 3 inch roller when applying top coat to trims and corners and a brush for detailed areas. Before applying top coat to the main area of the roof, fix a C100 simulated lead flashing trim with a C7 internal and external corner using curate trim adhesive. Seal the C100 trim using lead mate. Once top coat has been applied to corners and trims and the C100 trim has been fixed into place, use a 6 inch roller to apply the top coat to the main area of the roof. 0.4 kilograms of top coat should be used to cover every square meter. Do not use more than this. Once the top coat has been applied, the roof should be completely cured within 24 hours. Do not apply water unnecessarily to the roof before this point. The Curit GRP waterproofing system is complete. For instructions on installing Curit to other specifications, see our other guidance videos.